that we can pause and be still and know that you are God. Totally in charge. As Isaiah saw you, you are high and lifted up, lofty, exalted, and the train of your robe is filling the temple as we humbly enter into your presence. All praise and honor be to our great God. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you promised where two or three have gathered together in your name, that you're right here with us in our midst. And Lord, we love this precious man of God that you've sent us tonight. And yes, we've come to hear him preach. But Lord, even more than that, we have come to be in your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God, help us to be caught up in your presence, dear God. And Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. To take an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is, pull aside from everything that's outside these walls and focus on you. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. Say that with me. Fix our eyes on Jesus. And Lord, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise you, Lord. Receive our praise, even now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son. Lord, we, we thank you that you are with us tonight. And Lord, I pray that these words would be the testimony of our hearts. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your living.
Give him praise for being with us tonight. Hallelujah. Bethany, come on and lead us. Y'all get ready to sing along, okay? Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. you thankful that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. All we have reason to sing tonight. Am I right? Come on, let's continue worshiping together as we sing.
seated if you can. Maya, come and testify. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling.
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing your name is light. Break every stronghold and shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus.
every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Thank you guys so much. Wasn't that wonderful music tonight? Can you bring that over here, Wallace? There you go. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, this has been a great month, has it not? Here, yeah, you can come on back. That's fine. Amen. August. And uh, you need to buckle your seatbelt. A preacher is in the house, man. Dr. Fred Luter, let's just thank him right now. I, I want to enter, come on up, come on, I'm going to talk about you a little bit. <laughs> Fred's my friend, and he has been the senior pastor. Come on over here, brother, at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church in New Orleans. Did I say that right? Nolens, no, Nolens, okay, Louisiana. He went there in 1986. They had 65 members, and now since 2005, just 20 years later, they've had over 7,000 members and growing. Amen. And uh, I love him so much for so many reasons. We have preached together at different places, and uh, I always want to go before him. I don't want to go after him, but uh, he was in 2012 in a just absolutely amazing uh, time in New Orleans. He was elected as the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and he was the first African-American ever to hold that place. Amen. Amen. And you uh, told me just now that you're, you and your wife been married uh, in, in 1980, oh, in October, and Don and I got married that same year. So uh, 42 years, man, coming up. Yes. We love you. You're, look, you're among friends. Let's welcome Dr. Fred Luter. Amen. Let's give it up for your pastor, Dr. Steve Gaines. Let's give it up for this incredible music ministry. Didn't they bless our hearts tonight? Listen, I don't know how the preaching's gonna be, but the singing's been real good. Amen, amen. I, that, that song is in my spirit. I am who he say I am, or so I am I. Oh, man, I could have I got down on that one, man. I tell you, if that would have been in Franklin Avenue, we would have been doing a two step somewhere along that. that that was incredible, incredible, incredible music, incredible song. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing? Amen. Give the obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life, from my brother, from another mother, your pastor, my friend and brother beloved, our Steve Gaines. Thank you, my brother, for this incredible opportunity that you've given me once again to be here at the historic Bellevue uh, Baptist Church here in Memphis, Tennessee, to his beautiful wife, Donna, who... Uh, uh, has touched so many hearts and so many lives of pastor wives across this city, state, and nation. Uh, my wife, Elizabeth, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, my prime real, my good thing, sends her love, <laughs> sends her love and appreciation to you, Donna, for all that you have been in her life and pastor's wives all over uh, this country. Uh, Bethany, good to hear, hear you tonight. Good. Well, what a blessing it was to hear you tonight. Amen. Uh, when she came in off, one of, one of the things my daughter, Kimberly, looks forward to every year is getting the Christmas card from the Gaines family. She said, Daddy, it came yet? It came yet? It came yet? I said, not yet. She loved to see the picture of all the Gaines family and the kids and the grandkids. Just makes her day, makes her day, and makes her night. So I am honored. I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be back here and to be among some folk from Franklin Avenue and New Orleans. All you folk from New Orleans, will y'all stand from Franklin Avenue? Will y'all stand all over the place? Newman, good to see you, man. God bless y'all. It's so good to see y'all. I never forget 
Pastor Wes and Jeanette, good to see dear friends through the years, a local pastor here in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and I just thank the Lord for all of you who are here, uh, members of uh, Bellevue, all the guests that are assembled here on tonight. I am thanking God for this wonderful and exciting privilege. Uh, I've heard about the great services y'all have had in this wonderful August. I just don't want to mess it up. I just don't want to mess it up. It's been so good, and I just want to thank uh, my brother from another mother for this wonderful wonderful opportunity. Him and I uh, just finished preaching uh, in Dothan, Alabama. He was there Monday. I was, oh, got somebody here from Dothan. All right. <laughs> I was there the, the Monday before. It's even nice. They say we've preached all over the country together, and I'm always honored uh, to be here and to share in the Word of God. Y'all pray for us and knowledge. You know, this is the month of August. And, uh, you know, Katrina hit in 2005, and all these folk were here. Katrina ran them here. Hey, man, from uh, New Orleans. And then last year, Hurricane Ida uh, hit in the month of August, and we're still doing repairs. Even at our church, we're doing roof repairs right now. Uh, from our, from, so this is a difficult month uh, for us. Uh, people get real anxious uh, during the month of August because of all the, that's, that's prime time for hurricanes. So keep us in prayer uh, that God would just watch over us uh, this year, that no hurt, harm, or danger uh, would come uh, uh, upon us because it's a, just a difficult difficult time uh, uh, for us. So I bring my love and uh, uh, prayers from the membership and uh, from FABC, and it's just good to see former Franklinites, what I call them, Franklin Away members, amen, who are here, and I just thank God for each and every one of you. Well, turn your Bibles tonight to the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 9, as we share tonight in the Word of God. Matthew chapter 9, as we share in the Word of God. Everything that we do as believers, we have to do by faith. Uh, uh, the last two years since this pandemic has been a time of faith, uh, uh, trusting and believing in, uh, uh, that we're going to get through what we, we're going through. Uh, 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 we're trusting by faith in the city of New Orleans uh, right now that we can get through this hurricane season without any difficult times. Uh, every day when you leave your house in the morning, you, you're going out on faith. God, uh, God, li allow me to get back uh, to my home and to my family uh, uh, safely. When I got on that airplane this morning at 7 a.m. Uh, in New Orleans, I got on it by faith. God, get me from uh, New Orleans to Atlanta, Atlanta uh, to Memphis. E everything we do, you came here tonight uh, by faith through the, inter through the interstate and the traffic and thing, and we're here tonight trusting God by faith that God's going to move in a mighty way as he he already has with the music ministry so that we can be all that God wants us to be. So faith is critical and crucial in the life of every believer. And I want to talk about that tonight, not for, not for everyone who's here, those in the balcony, those on the bottom level, those watching by way of internet. Matthew chapter 9, I want you to look at with me uh, verses 27 through 31 of that chapter. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 31 of that chapter. If you have it, please say amen. amen. Y'all can say amen all throughout my sermon. All right, Wes told me he's going to say amen. So I got two amens over there. So Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 31, you'll find these similar words. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him and all that country. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful and exciting privilege to be back here at the Bellevue Baptist Church. Thank you for my brother from another mother, Pastor Steve Gaines. Thank you for his beautiful wife, Donna. God, what a joy it is to see them and be in their presence again, God. Thank you for the impact that they've had not only here at the Bellevue, but all across this nation, God, uh, from pastors by way of Steve, from pastors' wives by way of Donna, God. Thank you for the impact that they have made in so many 
lives. Now, God, thank you for this music ministry. Wow, how they blessed our hearts and blessed our lives on tonight, God. What great, great music, God, to us in the Spirit of God in this place. God, I am overjoyed to see Franklinites, God. Uh, I haven't seen some of them in, in years, God, but what a joy it is to see them, God, and I just pray your blessings upon them collectively and individually. Now, God, do as you as I ask every time I stand to preach. Father, hide me behind the cross. Let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repent. The devil, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. Now be so very careful to give your name all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake. Let everybody again say... Amen. Verse 29, then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be unto you. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, uh, with this service, awesome Wednesday night service in mind, I want to preach tonight from the subject, the importance of living by faith. The importance, Bellevue, of living by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most important spiritual disciplines for every believer is to live a life of faith. The West, the West, one of the most important spiritual disciplines for every Christian is to live a life of faith. One of the most important spiritual disciplines for every child of God, Jill and uh, uh, Jack, uh, uh, Brother Nicholas, is to live a life of faith. Does not matter your age, does not matter your race, does not matter, Nick, your vocation, does not matter your gender, does not matter your denomination. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the fact of the matter is one of the things that God expects of every child of God, one of the things that God expects of every believer, one thing that God expects of every Christian, one of the things that God expects of every disciple is that God expects us to live a life of faith. As a matter of fact, the Bible is very clear when it talks about the importance of faith in the life of every believer, in the life of every Christian, in the life of every disciple. Uh, uh, Newman, uh, Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith come by hearing uh, and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith, no, and not by sight. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for by grace are you saved uh, through what? Faith. And that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. One of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, baby, but Christ that lives in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live here is by the faith of of the Son of God who not only loved me, but gave him life for me. Hebrews 11 and 1 say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6 say, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And finally, a, a verse that every believer should be able to say at the end of your journey, when you've said your last breath, when you're about to uh, 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 go, go from earth to glory, a scripture that all of us should want to be saying about us, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. This is what Paul said. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the spiritual discipline of faith is critical in the life of every believer. The spiritual discipline of faith is crucial in the life of every believer. Bellevue, the spiritual discipline of faith is important in the life of every believer. However, if the truth were told, if we take off the mask, if we take off the halo, if the truth were told, many of us would put our faith in other things and other people before we put our faith and trust in God. Many of us would put our faith in other people and other things before we put our faith in God. If the truth were told, take off the mask, take off the halo the, from, from the upper tier, from the balcony to the bottom level. If the truth were told, many of us put more faith in a casino than we put in God. Just keeping it real, just keeping it real. Many of us, if the truth were put more faith in a lottery than we put our faith in God. Don't raise your hand, but how many of y'all tried to get that billion dollars? In don't, don't raise your hand. I told the members of our church, Steve, y'all can play it. Just make sure you tie it to Franklin Avenue after you win the lottery. 
more people put more, many of us put more faith in a political party than we put our faith in God. Many of us put more uh, uh, faith in people than we put our faith in God. Many of us put more faith in a football team. If I was coming to here tonight, if I get on the elevator at the wonderful hotel y'all got me staying at, man, and I get on the elevator and there's a guy in an Alabama street. I'm an LSU fan. I said, man, of all the elevators I could have got on, of all the hotels I could have, I get on an elevator with a guy with an Alabama. I'm so tired of hearing Roll Tide, man, I tell you, I tell you. But more people put more faith in Roll Tide and in the Memphis Tigers and the New Orleans Saints. Who that, who that, who that? Talking about beating them Saints. Uh, they put more faith in sports and football and basketball teams uh, than they put in God. And the list goes on and on and on. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Christian, at some point in your walk with God, if you are a believer at some point on this Christian journey, and if you are a child of God, a son of God, a daughter, at some point in your what you must put your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God. I've just, it's not enough to preach about faith. Anybody can preach about faith. It's not enough to teach about faith. Anybody can teach about faith. It's not enough to teach about faith. Anybody, it's not enough to sing about faith. Anybody can sing about faith. It's not enough to talk about faith. Anybody can talk about faith. However, brothers and sisters, I suggest to you today that God is not looking for someone who can preach about faith. God is not looking for someone who can teach about faith. Bellevue, God is not looking for someone who can sing about faith. God is not looking for someone who can talk about faith. God is looking for believers who will live every day of their lives by faith. I need to say that one more time. Anybody can preach about faith. Anybody can teach about faith. Anybody can sing about faith. Anybody can talk about faith. But Bellevue, God is looking for believers who every day of their lives will live their life by faith. God is looking for believers who will put their faith into action like the two blind men in our text here in Matthew chapter 9. Ladies and gentlemen, if you and I intend to live a life by faith, then I suggest to you that several things must happen according to the text. First of all, number one, Brother West, Jeanette, if we're going to live our life by faith, number one, faith involves timing. Frankly, I believe faith, Bethel, faith, uh, Bethel, faith, faith involves, Bethel, faith involves time. And look at verse 27 of Matthew chapter 9. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Faith involves time. And Steve, I, I, I have no doubt that these men Donna had heard about Jesus before. That's why they followed him. I have no doubt they had heard about this man by the name of Jesus before. That's why Nick, that's why Jill, that's why they followed him when they found out where he was. I have no doubt that these men had been in a town where Jesus was in before. That's why they followed him. However, and for whatever the reason, they never put their faith into action. Maybe they were not ready to change. Maybe they were not ready to be delivered. Maybe they were not ready to be set free. Maybe they were not ready to put their faith, their trust, and their confidence in God. However, according to the text, today was a different day. According to the text, this time in the text was the right time. Uh, 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 today, they were ready to change. Uh, today, the timing was right because today, these men put their faith uh, into action. There have been many times I've been, I pastor Franklin Avenue for 35 years, the only church I've ever pastored. Many people who are here tonight were members there before a woman named Katrina ran the all of Memphis, all right? Uh, 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 and I've seen many times I preach a sermon in the, uh, uh, on a Sunday morning and, and I know people that should come down there. I know people have been with, I know people whose lives need to change and they would just sit there and sit there and sit there because they're not ready to make a change in their lives. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, faith is an action word. Faith is an action word. And these two men, at this point in their lives, put their faith into action. Verse 27a says, they followed him. That's action. Verse 27b says, they cried out to him. That's action. 
Verse 28a says, they came to him, that's action. Verse 28b says, they responded to him, that's action. Faith is an action word. Even though these men were physically blind, uh, they had the spiritual insight to know that if change was going to happen in their lives, they had to put their faith in, their trust in, and their confidence into action. Let me say that again. Even though they were physically blind, they knew that, 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 that they had spiritual insight to know that if change, those in the balcony, those on the bottom level, was going to happen in their lives, they had to put their faith in the action. And like man are my brothers and my sisters. How many of us know about Jesus? Don't raise your hand. How many of us know of Jesus? Don't raise your hand. How many of us know God's word? Don't raise your hand, but have not put our faith, our trust, and our confidence in God. Lots of us know God promises, but don't experience the promises of God. Lots of us know what God says, but don't obey what God says. Lots of us have heard, uh, 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 have a head full of Bible information, but, never, but it never affects our heart. We've heard it, but it doesn't affect our heart. Lots of us know how to change, but yet we have not changed. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I've come all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana, to tell you, stop wasting time. Tonight is your night. Stop wasting time. Tonight is your night. Stop going through the motions. Tonight is your night. Stop just coming to church. Tonight is your night. Stop just coming to worship. Tonight is your night. Stop just coming to look. Tonight is your night. Stop having religion but no relationship. Tonight is your night. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to make a change in your life. If not you, who? If not now, when? Now is the acceptable time. Tonight is the day of salvation. Now is your time, my brother. Now is your time, my sister, to put your faith into action. Remember, faith without works is dead. Steve, I heard this story years ago about this elderly preacher, this elderly pastor, Wes, and he was in his early 80s, and one of the young men came up to him after service and said, Pastor, I've watched you through the years. I've, I've, I've literally been a part of this church through the years. And Pastor, you, you're in your early 80s. Pastor, can you explain to me, how is it that you're in your early 80s and your hair is jet black? He said, Pastor, all the older men of this church that I know who's in their 60s and their 70s, their hair is either gray or they've just, like Wes did, they just took it off. They just took it off. <laughs> Pastor, you in your 80s and your hair is jet. Pastor, how in the world are you in your 80s and your hair is jet black? And the young man, Pastor, looked at the young man and said, oh, young man, if I tell you, I got to kill you. No, he didn't say that. that. <laughs> he said, young man, uh, I use hair dye. The young man looked at him and said, no, no, pastor. I cannot believe uh, you use hair dye. Pa he, the young man said, pastor, I've been at this church for years and years. You've always preached from this pulpit about the importance of having faith, the importance of trusting God by faith. And now, even at your, uh, your old age, you tell me, pastor, that you dye your hair? Pastor looked at the young man and said, young man, faith without works is dead. <laughs> faith is an action word. But not only faith involves timing, but I hope I didn't mess up somebody's game here tonight. <laughs> not only faith involves timing, but number two, faith involves trusting. Right. Now, not only faith involves timing, but faith involves Nick trusting. Look at verses 28 and 29. No, when it says, and when he had come into the house, the men came to him. Don't miss this. Jesus came into the house. The men came to him, and Jesus said unto these blind men, do you believe that I am able 
to do this. Don't miss their response. They said to him, yes, Lord. Verse 29, then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Right. Now, not only faith involves timing, but faith also involves trusting. Notice the question that Jesus asked them in verse 28. Fellas, do you believe that I am able to do this? Have you noticed their response? They didn't say, well, I think you can. They didn't say, well, I heard you do it for other people. They didn't say, well, if, if it's a possibility, their response was, yes, Lord, we believe that you can do this. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it was their faith that Christ honored. Their yes, Lord, that Christ honored. It was their confession of yes, Lord, uh, that released the power for their healing in their lives. And like man of my brothers and my sisters, those are two words that Jesus wants to hear from every last one of us in the Bellevue Baptist Church of tonight. Those are two words that Jesus wants to hear from all of us in this awesome Wednesday service on the yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Are you ready for a change? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to be delivered? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to be set free? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to confess? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to repent? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to be forgiven? Yes. Yes, Lord. Are you ready to be made whole? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Are you ready to practice what you preach? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to test what you teach? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to sing out what you sing out? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to stop playing church? Yes, Lord. Are you ready to let go and let God? Yes, Lord. Are you tired of having just religion and no relationship? Yes, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that's what God wants to hear from every last one of us tonight. Yes, Lord, because faith involves trusting. That's why Psalms 37 and 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and you shall be fair. That's why Psalms 31 and 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. That's why Psalms 118 and 8 says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's why Proverbs 33 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, my brother, my sister, acknowledge him, and the Bible says he shall direct thy path. That's why Isaiah 26 and 4 says, trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Bellevue, faith involves trusting. Anybody can say they have faith, but not many are willing to to put their faith in the action. If you ever heard this story years ago, I had to check it up, I had to go on the internet myself to check it out. You, you can't believe everything you read on the internet, but uh, they showed pictures and all that stuff about this guy by the name of Charles Blondie, lived in Canada in the 1800s. He was a famous daredevil in Canada. He was the evil Knievel of Canada. How many of y'all remember evil Knievel? Crazy dude, man, crazy dude. And, I mean, he, he would jump over things, he would do all kind of things. But Charles Blondie's most famous stunt was walking on a tightrope over the Niagara Falls. Some of you may have read it before. Some of you may have seen it before. Just check it. Charles Blondie, his famous stunt was walking on a tightrope over the Niagara Falls. According to the uh, story, he did it over 200 times. Over 200 times. Yeah, bro, I said the same thing. Over 200 times, this dude walked over... Niagara Falls uh, 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 on a tightrope. Well, after the interest died down, after people saw it for so many times, the interest just died out uh, 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 that, of this amazing feat. It, and and it, 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 nobody was going to see him anymore. Nobody was going to do it anymore. And after the interest died down, he shocked the world by declaring on next Saturday morning he would take a man across Niagara Falls in a wheelbarrow. I mean, the story hit all the local news stations, all the local, local newspapers, made national news that Charles Blinder said on next Saturday, it was breaking news on every station. 
Next Saturday, not only is he going to cross it, he's going to cross the Niagara Falls, pushing a man in a wheelbarrow. It was breaking news all over the country. The day before this incredible feat, he walked into a ballroom, and that explains why he was able to walk over Niagara Falls. He was drunk. <laughs> Who in their right, right mind would do that? But, but he goes into this bar, and just so happened that the men in the bar were arguing about this feat. I said, I don't believe he can do it. I said, I believe he can. I said, man, I, there's no way in the world that he can do this. He said, I believe he can. They yelled at one another. I don't believe that. Yes, he can. As a matter of fact, the guy said, I know he can do it. I believe that he can do it. As a matter of fact, I, I will bet anyone $100. He took money out of that. I will bet anybody a $100 bill. Charles Blondie can walk across the Niagara Falls pushing a guy in a wheelbarrow. Blondie heard that, ran over to the guy and said, brother, 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 I'm so glad you have faith in me because I need somebody to get into the wheelbarrow. <laughs> of course, you know what happened. <laughs> The man refused to get into the wheelbarrow, yet he said he believed. Well, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that's the problem God has with many of us in the body of Christ today. Faith involves trusting. Again, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. Many people say they believe God's Word. Many people say they have faith in God's Word. But when it comes to getting unto the wheelbarrow, they refuse. Therefore, they do not believe because faith is getting in the wheelbarrow. That's why I believe Jesus said what he said. West in verse 29. Look what he told the blind man. According to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith, let it be to you. In other words, Jesus says to them as he says to us, yes, I want you to change. I want you to be made whole. I want you to be delivered. I want you to be set free. However, it's according to your faith. Remember, change is only possible according to your faith. Deliverance is only possible according to your faith. I'm a living witness. Your marriage can be better, but it's according to your faith. Your single life can be better, but it's according to your faith. You can accomplish your goals, but it's according to your faith. You can be successful in your business, but it's according to your faith. You can live a victorious Christian life, but it's according to your faith. You can win more than you lose, but it's according to your faith. You can overcome your addiction. You can overcome your stronghold. You can overcome the issues that you face in life, but it's according to your faith. You can be the head and not the tail, but it's according to your faith. See, if I've seen it happen, I'm sure you have. Folks from Franklin, I'm going to see it have after Sunday service. People, we give an invitation. People come down the aisle and, and they're weeping and they're crying. And, Pat, I want to change. Pat, I want to be delivered from this addiction. I want to be delivered from this stronghold. And man, and, and we'll pray for them. We'll give them scriptures. We'll lay hands on them. And, and man, and, 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 and I say, uh, and, and do all those things. And they'll leave right out the door and do the same thing over and over and over again. Bellevue, this man is a man of faith. I've been watching him for years. You can go to him. Ask him to pray for you. He can lay hands on you. He can pray morning. He can call the prayer team together. And they can circle you and pray for you morning, noon, and night. But, but it's according to your faith. Jesus wants to know, do you believe? Are you ready to get into the wheelbarrow? Faith involves timing. Faith involves trusting. And finally, thanks again, Pastor. I appreciate the opportunity. 
Faith involves timing. Faith involves trusting. But finally, faith involves telling. Look in jail, faith involves telling. Look at verses 30 and 31 as I come to a close. And their eyes, mm, and their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But, there's that sanctified conjunction. But when they had departed, They spread the news about him in all that country. Faith involves telling. Notice Jesus told him, now, according to your faith, it's going to happen, but don't tell anybody what happened. Be quiet. Keep it to yourself. However, brothers and sisters, do I have any witness in here that when Jesus heals you, you can't keep it to yourself? When, when, I see that hand. When, when Jesus heals you, you can't keep it to yourself. When Jesus performs a miracle in your life, you can't keep it to yourself. When Jesus heals you of COVID and heals you of disease and heals you of your sickbed, you can't keep it to yourself. When Jesus delivers you from the strongholds and issues in your life that you've been addicted to for years and years, but one day he sets you free, you cannot keep it. Keep it to yourself. Jesus said to you, you got to tell somebody. When Jesus restores your joy, when Jesus restores your peace, when Jesus restores your hope, you got to tell somebody. When Jesus restores your love and your purpose and your family and your finances and your marriage, you just can't keep it to yourself. Oh, anybody beside me been restored? Anybody beside me been renewed? Uh, Anybody beside me been refreshed? Then tell somebody. Anybody been revived? Uh, Anybody been replenished? Uh, Anybody been reconciled? Uh, Then tell somebody. Anybody been reunited? Anybody been reborn? Uh, Anybody been rehabilitated? Then tell somebody. Anybody been rejuvenated? Anybody been rescued? Anybody been redeemed? Uh, And that's all the R's I can find in my dictionary. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. The Bible says, the scripture says, the word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so on your job. Say so at the mall. Say so at the hairdresser. Say so at the barber shop. Say so at the school. Say so at the football game, the basketball game, the soccer game. Say so. Say it everywhere you go that from this day forward, tell folk I will begin living a life uh, by faith. I can't speak for nobody in here. Can't speak for Steve. Can't speak for Donna. But ladies and gentlemen, one day I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters, from the gutters, he lifted me. Now safe in my love, lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, God's love lifted me. That's why I can't be quiet, Wes. Jeanette, I can't be quiet. Bellevue, I can't be quiet. I've got to tell it, I've got to tell it, I've got to tell it everywhere I go that faith involves timing, faith involves trusting, and faith involves telling. My grandmother Donna used to say it like this, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. You ought to have been there. I know it's bad English, but it's good theology. You ought to have been there when he saved my soul. You ought to have been there when he put my name. I started running and jumping and singing and shouting about what the Lord has done for me. I've got to go to my seat, but I've got to tell somebody. I've heard the joy bell sounds. Jesus says, Jesus says, I'm going to tell it all around. Jesus says, Jesus says to the utmost, Jesus says to the utmost, Jesus says he'll pick you up and he'll turn you around. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Say hallelujah. 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 Jesus says, Father, we thank you and we praise you for your saving grace. God, faith involves timing. Faith involves trusting. 
Faith involves telling. God, there are individuals here tonight who need to trust you by faith. They say they believe God. They say they trust you, but they haven't put their faith in the action. They refuse to get into the wheelbarrow. God, I trust and pray on the strength of this incredible music that we've heard tonight, on the strength of this sermon, on the importance of living life by faith. That people here tonight will make a commitment to trust you by faith. Couples will give their marriages to you by faith. Singles will give their lives to you by faith. Seniors will give their issues to you by faith. Young people will give their struggles to you by faith. And trusting that you will do what we believe that, you, that our yes, Lord, will be evident in their lives. That then you can do what you told us to do. And then, God, after you do it, we're not going to keep it to ourselves. We're going to tell somebody all over Memphis about what the Lord has done for us. And Master, when it's all said and done, be careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. For all that you've done, what you're doing right now, what you promise you will continue to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Bellevue, God bless y'all. I love y'all. Y'all pray for me, I'll pray for y'all. God bless. Well, amen. Let's take just a moment before we leave to give someone the opportunity to give their heart to Christ. If you don't know Jesus, that's where you start with your faith. You put your faith in him to forgive you for all of your sins, to come to live within your heart, and to completely take over in your life. And that starts your journey of faith. Let's just bow our heads just for a moment in the balcony on this main floor. If you tonight would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you just to pray with, with me right now and, and turn from your sin and turn to the Lord in faith. Believe that Jesus died for you. Believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And then by faith, give him your life and receive him. Pray something like this. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I want to be saved tonight. I want to become a Christian tonight. And Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin. I repent. And Lord, I believe that you died on the cross and paid the penalty for my sin. And I believe that you rose from the dead to give me eternal life. I repent and I believe. And now, Lord, I receive you. Come into my life. Save me right now, Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for coming into my life and saving me. If you prayed that, I want our pastors to come Stand here, ready to receive anybody that prayed to receive Christ. And then tonight, if you have something in your life that you would like to have somebody pray for you about, maybe you're sick 
and you say, I want somebody to pray for me, for my healing. We'll be glad to, as the Bible says in James 5, anoint you with oil and pray for you that you might be healed. We'll be glad to do that tonight if you'd like to come. If you've got something else that you'd like for us to pray about, you come. If tonight you've been saved but you've never been baptized, then I want you to come and set up a time to be baptized. If you'd like to join the church tonight, that's fine. If you just want to come to the altar and pray, you come. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that anyone here tonight who has been saved tonight or still wants to be would come. And I pray, dear God, that there be liberty for people to come to pray. And God, that they would bring their burden and cast it before you. Pour out your spirit upon us, dear God. Bless this time, we pray in Jesus' name. If that's your prayer, say amen. Let's sing. If you need to come, you come right now. It's who you 
Let's bow our heads just for a moment. Our Father, we thank you for the wonderful message from your word that we've had tonight. We thank you for the sermon and we thank you for the servant that gave the sermon. Most of all, we're grateful for the Savior who touched those men and touched our lives as well. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Father, I pray that as we leave here tonight that we will be very sensitive to people all around us who have needs and Lord I pray that we would pray for them pour out love on them and be Jesus to them connect us Lord with people that we can pray for that we can encourage. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just bless and keep all of us, Lord. Reach your hand this way toward this lady in this wheelchair right now. Just pray for her out loud right now. Trish, tonight I just pray in the name of Jesus. We have our hands on her shoulders, Lord, but we're asking you to put your hand on her heart and just heal her physically, emotionally, spiritually, and in every way. And Lord, all the people that could have easily come and needed to come but didn't, I pray, dear God, that you touch them right now with your hand just bless them and bless Trish and we give you praise and glory go with us Lord tonight I pray in Jesus name and if that's your prayer say amen let's thank brother Fred for coming tonight let me I feel like we need to make a motion that he comes back next year. Do I hear that motion? Is, okay. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor say amen. Amen. So, Fred, you got to come back next year, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it would, we'd thank you for coming. Thank you for being here tonight. God bless you, and be careful going home, and thank you so much. Amen.